Hello, the Pioneer viewers. We continue to bring you all the details about the Russia-Ukraine war. As you know, the war has been going on for more than two years. While the parties continue their mutual attacks, they are also trying to compensate for their losses. The attacks that have increased in recent days are leading to incredible results. The attacks on strategic points targeted by the Ukrainian army are causing consequences for the Russian economy that are difficult to compensate for. The Russian economy has become particularly vulnerable due to the costs of war. In addition, oil reserves, one of the most important resources of the Russian economy, are the primary target of Ukrainian attacks. As a result of the attacks, the Russian economy's transaction volume has shrunk and huge losses have been incurred. Ukrainian counterattacks follow the targets for a long time and work to realize the most effective attack. For this reason, the success rate of the attacks is quite high. Russian authorities are unable to take measures to prevent Ukrainian attacks because their military personnel capacity is very low. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine led to a war between the two countries. While the Ukrainian army defended its country against the invasion, the Russian army took the position of occupying a territory that does not belong to it. For this reason, there is a huge difference in motivation between the two armies. The majority of Russian army personnel are on the front line in exchange for money or as part of a contract with the state. Ukrainian army personnel, on the other hand, are patriotic soldiers who are there to defend their own territory. In recent days, the Ukrainian army has carried out drone strikes against Russian targets. In the wave of attacks, many targets belonging to the Russian army were bombed. In addition, oil facilities, which are of great importance for the Russian economy, were also targeted. The biggest development was the destruction of the Russian Air Force Training Center in the operational zone designated by the Ukrainian army. The school, which was established to train pilots for the Russian army, could not survive the attack of the Ukrainian army. Now, if you are ready, let's analyze the latest developments together. As the pioneer, we continue to report on the Russia-Ukraine war. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss our daily map reports and reports on the agenda. I also read all your comments on our videos. Please continue to share your ideas about our content in the comments with us in the comments. Let's start if you are ready. The Pioneer Reports the Ukrainian army launched a major operation in the late hours of the night the other day. Many drones and Ukrainian troops participated in the operation. The aim of the operation was to wage intimidation and tactical warfare against identified targets. Since the beginning of the war, the Ukrainian army has been observing the rules of tactical warfare. Knowing that they cannot completely destroy the Russian army, the Ukrainian authorities are therefore implementing a different and successful strategy. Ukrainian military intelligence has identified a Russian aviation training center for pilot training in Borisoglebsk, Voronezh region. As a result of the work of Ukrainian military intelligence in the region, critical information about the center was captured. After fulfilling its mission, Ukrainian military intelligence handed over the necessary process to the Ukrainian army. The Ukrainian army launched strikes against the identified target. Multiple videos, including night vision footage, showed that a large explosion hit the area where the aviation training center was located. The smoke after the explosion showed the severity of the attack. The images posted on social media emerged after the Russian Defense Ministry issued a statement saying that two Ukrainian drones had been destroyed by air defenses in the Voronezh region. Ukrainian authorities confirmed that the Borisoglebsk Aviation Center was hit in the attack, but did not provide any additional details, according to Ukrainian media reports. The Ukrainian army's dominance in the region is increasing. The Ukrainian army, which is looking stronger day by day, is trying to complete the war process without disrupting its plans. The open communication policy implemented throughout the war has been a positive process for the Kiev administration. In addition, recording and broadcasting all the footage of the war can be said to be another indicator of transparency. The military aviation training center hit by the Ukrainian army was badly damaged. Work at the center, which trains the best soldiers of the Russian army, came to a standstill. The Russian army will need a long time to reactivate the training center. The developments on the front line reveal the harsh face of the war. But there is also the diplomatic side of the war. While diplomatic relations continue, the incident that took place the other day shows how effective the rhetoric of the international community, especially the US, is in the war process. The Western sanctions campaign against Russia complicates business between Russian entities and China, which has become a vital market for Moscow, given the Kremlin's economic isolation during its war against Ukraine. 
In an article published the other day, citing data from the Central Bank of Russia, it was determined that both exports and imports between the two neighboring markets have decreased. The article said the problem appeared to be linked to Chinese banks' refusal to engage with some Russian clients for fear of crying foul over Western sanctions. Russia and China have been trading more in Yuan since Moscow launched its invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 and have faced unprecedented sanctions from Western rivals. Moscow was cut off from the worldwide SWIFT payment system and unable to trade in dollars. Russia subsequently adopted the Yuan for most of its international transactions. However, the recently falling share of imports and exports denominated in yuan is reducing its profitability. For export revenues, the yuan share fell to just over 30% in March data, compared with just over 40% in January. For import revenues, the yuan share fell to 32.3% in the March data release, down from 38.5% in January. Some major Chinese banks have already stopped processing Russian payments. Some banks have resorted to receiving payments through third parties. Such obstacles to payment processing have made trade more costly and time-consuming. An analysis last week reported that Russian companies face delays of up to six months as concerns about secondary sanctions have caused Chinese banks to tighten controls. But there are still thousands of banks in China that have no presence in the U.S. market and are therefore not exposed to potential sanctions. Still, any hint of trade problems with the Chinese could be worrying for the Kremlin. China is by far Russia's largest trading partner, with business between the two neighbors reaching a record high of nearly $240 billion in 2023. In bilateral relations, Russia and China appear to be friendly, but when it comes to interests, they can turn into strangers. What do you think about the operation organized by the Ukrainian army? What kind of a strategy do you think targeting the soldiers' training ground could be part of? What do you think about the developments between Russia and China? What do you think one allied country should offer to the other? We care about your views, please share them with us.